Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Today I'd like to evaluate this, this integral right here, um, and I want to derive a, uh, you know, a, a just a basic formula in terms of A that does not involve an integral expression. So we're going to solve this integral just in terms of A. All right, so our first step, well actually, first I'm just going to restate the integral. We aim to evaluate the integral f of a is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine of x raised to the a power integrated with respect to x. And we will specify that a is a real number or real parameter. All right. Let's just make the substitution x is equal to arc tangent u. All right. That's going to give us dx is equal to 1 over u squared plus 1 du. And um, I'm not going to show the steps involved in this, but the... Uh, the, the integral will become this if you perform that substitution. If you let x is equal to arctangent u, you will find that the integral simplifies to this. Well, actually, that's not very simple. That's kind of a messy expression, but um, it's better than what we had before. So the in, now our f of a can be expressed that way. All right. So next, let's just define a more general function of t um, and this is going to help us evaluate f of a. All right. So our f of t is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over x squared plus t integrated with respect to x. Um, and we can, uh, we can just evaluate that integral and find that the, uh, it evaluates to pi over 2 times t to the negative 1 half. And now what we're going to do is use the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign on both these expressions for f of t. And if we differentiate them, they will be equivalent. If we differentiate them twice, their second derivatives will be equivalent. Their third derivatives will be equivalent. So we get the following. We're just going to express f of a in terms of f of t. We're going to compute successive derivatives of f of t with respect to t. All right. So f prime of t is equal to this. This is what you get if you use the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign on our original f of t. And, but you also get this. This is the explicit form of f of f prime of t. Taking the second derivative gives you this. Taking the third derivative gives you this. Go ahead and pause the video and, um, you know, verify that for yourself if you'd like. But, um, and then also, before we go on to the next step, see if you can see the pattern here. Um, we can express this as the nth derivative of our f of t like this. So the pattern emerges, and this is what we get. This, this f, to, f to the n of t really means the nth derivative. That's the notation I'm using. And we can express the nth derivative of our integral form and our explicit term explicit form of f of t like this. The nth derivative is going to be equal to this in explicit form, and as an integral, the nth derivative will be equal to this. Go ahead and pause the video and wrap your head around that. Um, and so I'm just saying that 2n minus 1 double factorial, that's right here, that's the double factorial of 2n minus 1. Uh, that just means uh, basically those are the odd double factorials. A double factorial means it's like the factorial, but you skip a number. So seven double factorial would be like seven times five times three. And, and it, it works like that. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate this equality at the point t is equal to one. All right. And it, that's, that's helpful because this whole thing right here will drop out. It'll just go to one. So Oh, gosh, I'm messing up. Okay. So, um, yeah, if we let t is e if we let t equal 1, we get this. I just replace the t with a 1, and basically that just goes away. And you'll also notice something else that I did. You'll notice that from here to here changes a little bit. Um... We no longer have this 2n minus 1 double factorial. Instead, 
I just used the formula for 2n minus 1 double factorial. Um, and this is the formula right here. Um, 2n minus 1 double factorial is going to be equal to um, 2n minus 1 factorial over n minus 1 factorial times 2 to the n minus 1. Um, go ahead and verify that for yourself. See if you can come up with that formula on your own. It is true, though. Um, so moving on, we, uh, we are going to relate back to our original integral. So now don't forget, we have this. We have this integral 0 to infinity of 1 over x squared plus 1 to the n plus 1 dx is equal to this. All right, so this is, this is basically just an expression. You, we can kind of consider this a function of n if we want, um, but it's equal to this. Now don't forget, or, or notice that this is actually very close to what we need our f of a to be. Remember, our f of a was this. So that's almost the exact same form. Um, we just have to replace n with a plus 2. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah, so we substitute n is equal to a, I'm not sorry, not a plus 2, a divided by 2. We substitute n is equal to a divided by 2 into the expression, um, and we get f of a. Don't forget f of a was this thing. Um, now, that's going to be equivalent to this thing evaluated at n is equal to a over 2. And that, go, that, that transforms just like this. All right. And now I'm going to um, I'm going to simplify this a little bit, and I won't show the simplification process. See if you can figure it out on your own. But that can actually simplify to this, which is which is a nicer expression. Um, so our f of a um, is equal to this, and don't forget f of a was the exact thing we were trying to find, and it's equal to this. So. Our final expression for the integral is this, the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine x all raised to the a dx is equal to pi times a factorial divided by a over 2 factorial squared times a plus 1. Now, obviously, this is going to work out a lot nicer for even powers uh, or for even uh, values of a um, because we have this a divided by 2 factorial. So if it's even, we're going to get an integer factorial. Um, you'll know from my previous videos, or you might just know it anyway, that um, factorials of like n over 2 are, are totally possible. Um, those are, you, you can definitely evaluate uh, those things quite easily. Um, with uh with use of the gaussian integral and relating n factorial um to um its integral form um but anyway this is the, this is the answer um i hope you oh one more thing i should have specified this i should have written it down but this is going to be good for a greater than zero all right guys uh, i hope you enjoyed that and we will see you next time